Okay, so it's the day to rip apart my old Eherms three vessel kaggle setup. Just too big. Too, too big. That eight gallon kettle is just too small. So I went with a 62 quart by U Classic, added the heating elements, added my thermocoupler down there, heating element over there, recirculatory line lock I think that's what that's called lock line got some new tubing reuse one of the old pumps other pumps down there added a couple new fittings so they come right in nice and short don't have all this extra line holding wart really nice and simple I could have used that old box over there and just plugged it in just went but honestly that is an eyesore so Picked up a six inch by six inch electric um, waterproof box with cover, as you can see here. I'm kind of mimicking uh, high gravity's EBC 130 setup. So I'm gonna have the PID sitting here. I'm gonna have my on off switch for the PID right here. I'm gonna have an LED right here that's going to tell me if the breaker is on so this is main voltage main line voltage coming in I don't need to know if the keys on or not because this will light up if the keys on this will light up if I have my breaker on and if it's plugged into the socket then so the layout will be PID key switch and LED on this side I'll have a new heat sink from Arbor. It's already been drilled. So you go on this side. Got to cut a hole for the SSR. It's a 40 amp SSR. That's going to be mounted to this unit. And I have new grease that I'm going to place on there. As you can see, I cleaned off the old stuff. Okay. That's going to go on this side. On this side, I'm going to have coming in is going to be the main line voltage that's going to be from that plug it's going to come in here going out from here is going to be this twist lock feeding the element on this side is going to be a single outlet 120 outlet and a switch let's see if I can find it and it is Oh, mommy's out studying, Bubby. You all ready for your for bedtime? No. No? What are you doing? Watching TV? Yeah. <laughs> so this is the old one, but I have a new one. It's a single outlet with a switch. You feed in main power, line voltage, and you have your neutral. And what gets connected is the line voltage travels through the switch goes back around feeds the outlet that's going to be on the front that's always going to have power as long as the main is breakers turned on so when that LED is on if I flip that switch on the pump will work on this side I'm going to add a 30 amp push fuse it's a push button circuit breaker and I also have a 10 amp circuit breaker one's going to feed the main line going through the contactor. So from, from the main line, we're taking the red line voltage gonna run in here. When you provide 120 volts through the key switch from the black wire here, and you feed it into here with a neutral on this side and the line on this side going through the switch, it will turn on the contactor and allow the other 120 to flow through that 120 will then feed the SSR which will allow the element to work okay so from this contactor it's going to run out go through the 30 amp circuit breaker come back through into my bus bars where I can divvy it up and distribute the power in your sub panel your main panel but I did this is my 30 amp square D GFI 
right now it's on tripped turn it off then you can turn it back on I also have a jacuzzi tub upstairs so that's in there as well so that runs over goes to the plug main feed comes in this side heating element comes out this side SSR heat sink goes on the top outlet with switch for the pump goes on here constant 120 over here would be the two circuit breakers and also the input for the thermal coupler that's about it hopefully everything fits this looks like it should fit in here no problem but it is pretty close so if I was to put this here I had to just really see about this outline uh, this layout because I want to fit some of these bus bars in there and they do fit in but as you can see they're they squeeze down in there pretty good I might only be able to get one in there and I have to share um, both hots and a neutral off of these so I'm not running a fan anymore I'm not gonna be running you know multiple SSRs and PIDs and lights and everything else so I, I don't want to use wire nuts but if it makes it easier I may just do that instead of using that bus that's a lot cleaner but wire nuts definitely work as well all right I'll show you after I'm done cutting it up so here it is it took about four hours to rip apart the old stuff and to just barely fit it into this new box Start it up, heat it up. So it's the next morning, and as you saw from the previous video, that was late last night at 12 o'clock, and then I spent another two to two and a half hours pulling it apart, testing. You saw that when I turned the key on, and I turned, had the element running, and you could see that the element was on, the output was on, and it was hooked up. When I turned off the key, everything stayed on, and it kept heating. It was running off of 120 volts going out to the kettle instead of 240. The reason why that happened was I followed what the other person did. And I also followed what the electric brewery did, but I was only using one contactor. And what happened was I was only, I was using the, the there's two lines coming in a neutral and a ground the ground if you look straight down sorry about how bad this looks but if you look straight down right down there you could see that there is the ground bar that is going from the input goes underneath goes up and around and goes to a ground bar then from the ground bar it goes back to the heating element I'm also coming off and going into the outlet okay so then I go ahead and I get my neutral, which runs from here up, and it gets pigtailed all together with a wire nut. It feeds my light, it also feeds the outlet, and it also feeds the PID for a neutral. That's all I really need it for. So you see the white wire going down to the PID, to the light, going down to, um, I'm sorry, the outlet, and also it feeds the contactor to turn to switch it off and on I then have I did have just the the red wire one load one line coming in and getting broken by the contactor and then that ran into the 30 amp fuse circuit breaker then it ran into the SSR and then out 
The problem that I was having is when I turned off the power to the red by turning off the contactor, the black line two was just bypassed and went right in and through the heating element, which in turn is just a resistive coil inside the pot. And it was going through and then return back all the way and it wants to find it's neutral. But since there's no neutral, what it did was it backfed and kept the PID on and the SSR. If I disconnected the element, it would go right out. This was creating a loop that was backfeeding the PID and it was, even though I had no, I did not have the red wire um, running through technically, I shut it off, I took power away from it, it was still back feeding through the black wire and running back along the red wire which is on an element, I don't have an element in front of me, but you basically have three wires that come in, I can't really show you on that, you have three wires on here, you have your, your ground and your two hots. So if one hot gets shut off and it doesn't find its path back to ground, it will then go and circle back around. So what I had to do, if you look at the contactor now, the black comes in, the red comes in, they both run in, they both get broken by the contact. Turn on. So let me show you now what, what's done. So right now it's off, everything's off. Didn't trip good sign if you look the lights on everything else is off if I turn on this I'm probably gonna run this a little dry but let me show you it turned on that's good so I have power to that I also have power to the light I'm gonna turn this bad boy on turned on My thermocoupler is plugged in. I also have water in there. And right now, it is set to zero. Duty cycle. Well, temperature. I'm going to turn to 100 degrees. Kicks on. SSR light is on. It is now providing power to the heating element which you can see there's bubbles coming off of the heating element and then if I turn off the key now it's going to kill power to both hot leads coming in and it turns off but I still have a pump that can run everything so that's good as you can see this is quite tight this took a lot of finagling to get this even to look this good and to fit everything. This PID is tight in there between the SSR and the contactor. But it fits and everything is, looks good. So, nice build. Pain in the butt. Up late. Working on it now. Got it working. I have all the extra parts for a second build. If I wanted to, if I wanted to maybe bait back some money I'll go ahead and do that run it through there get another pot sell it on uh, eBay or something but I would definitely clean this up if I sold it but but yeah definitely got a couple tips and tricks here probably even put a box on the outside of this so that I get more room in there so I don't have to you know or even use an 8 inch by 8 inch box that way I have a little bit more room all right have a good one, guys. I'm going to put it back together, give you a final shot, and that's it.